Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Well, we are out here doing a little wild pheasant hunting today. That's going to be on in a couple of weeks. But on this week's show, we're going to have Jordan's opening day story from just north of Lansing, not too far from where we're standing right now. We're also going to have one of the best waterfowl hunts you've seen in quite a while. And we're going to have time for a bragging board as well. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gratzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by country smokehouse a sportsman's destination since 1988 featuring varieties of homemade sausage jerky brats and gourmet entrees holiday gift boxes can be assembled in store or online Details at CountrySmokeHouse.com. By Discount Door Company, featuring residential and commercial garage doors, door styles, and build-your-own design tool available at DiscountDoorGR.com. Discount Door Company, serving West Michigan and the Grand Rapids area for over 25 years. By Hemisphere Design Works, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsman's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, HemisphereDesignWorks.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. We're on a family farm in Scioto Township, Shiawassee County. I have an apple orchard and started uh, a couple years after I got out of the Navy, maybe 75, 76, and we went and bought the tent and we've been using the tent virtually every year since. It's generally up close to a couple of weeks and we hunt mostly with family. A couple of close friends and, and a lot of family. I bought the tent, like I said, I, I can't really remember. It was 75 or six. And uh, one of my cousins had some pipe. We made the ridge pole. And uh, we just added to it over time. Uh, this barrel, we made a barrel stove and we did it a couple of different ways and added to it. Uh, another, uh, Dick Archer used to go with us quite a bit. Dick's passed away now. But the grill, that happened along, and then we added the bunks. We did uh, lanterns for years. But this younger generation, they decided they wanted a generator. So, uh, so far we haven't had any TVs, but it just got added to over the years. So that's nothing you have to do all in one year. For the opener, I would be sitting with Brad's nephew, Adam. Adam owns some property near the orchard and usually has some luck on opening day. The plan was to hunt in the morning, and if we didn't have any luck, break for lunch and come back out with Adam and his son, Blake, for the evening hunt. So opening day, uh, 2018, out here with Jordan. <clears throat> Already seen a handful of deer. Um, actually, there's some at the end of the shoot lane right now. A couple of small bucks. We're hunting the edge of a pretty big swamp, uh, Long Simon Orchard, Shiawassee County. Heard a little shooting so far this morning, but not a lot. Nice and brisk out for an uh, opener. Happy about that. I grew up hunting the orchard with uh, my Uncle Brad, exposed me to the sport, and probably my first deer was uh, a pear tree, a row of pear trees was along the south edge of the farm here, and shot a doe with my Uncle Brad. And then as the years progressed, we always hunted together. And uh, the downturn in the economy uh, made the neighboring farm 
become available and was able to purchase that and kind of add it onto our property a little bit and that's a nice hunting spot. Man, he is on the move with the, I mean, he just did a whole circle around the blind in yeah. two or three minutes. Well, we had a pretty good morning. Uh, we saw a lot of deer, a lot of activity. Nice, cold, crisp morning. We had a decent buck into the blind early, but too dark. Um, lots of does and little ones. Um, shortly before noon, we're gonna head back to camp and uh, see how the rest of the crew did. And, Hopefully get my son out here tonight and uh, maybe uh, have some success for him. Although a couple of guys in camp did have some luck, all in all, opening morning was pretty slow. But with the snow falling fast, I think all of us were excited to get back out in the blind for opening night. We picked up Adam's son, Blake, and headed back out for the evening hunt. Open night, 2018. Blake is uh, the shooter here in the Shiawassee County blind. Hoping to find a nice buck for Blake. Could be his first buck. Yeah, I love getting the boys outside and off their iPads and exploring the outdoors. And you know, the trapping's a lot of fun with one of our neighbors. He does a lot of stuff with Blake and uh, exposes him to a lot of really a lot of neat stuff. And. My older boy loves to deer hunt too, and we, we, we enjoy the property a lot. I mean, we do stuff on the property all the time, and a little small portion of it's the deer hunting, but uh, I just like getting them outside and being active and seeing things and experiencing nature, and I think it's a good environment for them. After seeing several adult does, Blake spotted a nice buck working his way through the grass. It only took one look to know this buck was a shooter, and now we just had to try and get the camera and Blake on the buck. Shoulder, like you said. Shh, 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 shh. Right, lay down right there. He's going to the right. Man, he just couldn't get him to stop walking. I was trying to get him to stop for him. Yeah, I know you want him to stop. I was like, this is the one clear area. That was a tough situation because if he got further, I'd. I don't know. Yeah. He might have showed up in this lane. He might not have. Can you see on that video? Yeah. Yeah, we can look at it. He's oh. nice. He might have been bigger than the six or seven. He's nice. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Wow. I just saw one way out there and then it walked up and walked through the shooting lane and it wouldn't stop. So then I just shot it right behind his shoulder like my dad told me to. And then I like, started to run out here. After watching the footage over and over on the camera, we just couldn't quite tell where the bullet hit. So we decided to pack up and head to the nearest TV to see if we could see it a little bit better on the big screen. After watching the footage one time, we could see that Blake had hit the buck pretty well. And with the snow continuing to fall, we decided to head out immediately and look for the buck. It wasn't easy, but after about an hour, we were able to find Blake's buck. Look at them brow ties, that thing is radical. Oh my gosh, Blake! We were out here tracking and me and one of my dad's friends walked about like five feet from it on another trail and about 10 minutes, 20 or 20 minutes later my dad was looking through and he came by and he saw it and he, so he yelled out, we found the buck, so super excited about that, got the nice buck and everything, so. It's your first buck, right? Uh -huh. Is that bigger than anyone your brother's ever shot? 
Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I'm a little selfish. I, I like to get the younger generation started because uh, it's, it's nice. I got the boys started, my nephew started, and now they pretty much throw the camp up, and uh, it's a, you know, a little easier for me and a little somebody to help you drag your own out. So now getting these, uh, like my great nephew, uh, Blake, um, you know, I got a couple other great nephews coming along and, and a grandson down the road. He's a little shaver yet. But uh, it's very important to get them out here and, and keep it going. Although we were in southern Michigan, between the snow and the tent, it sure felt like a northern Michigan deer opener. Special thanks to Brad, Adam, and the rest of the crew for letting me spend a couple of nights at deer camp in Shiawassee County. Well, it's always great to see a hunter harvest their first buck and to get to do it in that kind of snowfall here in Southern Michigan is pretty rare. That hunt was a lot of fun. Next up, we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna head over to the Thumb where I was able to tag along with a group of waterfowl hunters on one incredible morning in the field. Uh, we're up here in the Thumb this morning. Um, we uh, found this field last night. Uh, we had uh, probably uh, 800 Canadas in here and uh, 400 ducks. Got a few snows in the field. Should be a pretty good morning. It's not much, uh, not much light yet, but shooting time, so hopefully we can get on them and have a good hunt. Uh, we got nine, uh, nine guys today, shooters. Um, right now we have, uh, we have about 300 full bodies out. Um, goose decoys and then well, three dozen duck decoys, a couple spinners. Um, just got a U-shape here, sort of. It's a northeast, east wind. And hopefully they come right into the pocket. And... Kimber. Come here. Come here. Here, place. Give. The morning started out great with lots of ducks in the air and most of them working their way into our spread. It seemed like we barely had enough time to retrieve the ducks on the ground before the next flock would start working its way in. Well, we're getting into them pretty good. They definitely uh, are coming, uh, and we got some coming. They're coming uh, pretty fast, too. So. Got one going far, three, four. <laughs> That's all right. You are one rat. Yeah, there goes one way out there yeah. too. So oh, what were you saying? <laughs> I was saying they're coming fast. It's exactly what they're doing. Let's just let the dogs do in case they keep Here. coming. There you go. Oh, 
set up. Killing some geese, killing some ducks. Got a little bit of rain, cloud cover. Should be a good hunt. A lot of the birds came at once here. Already been a good hunt, I think. Yeah, we got double digits in geese and ducks, so keep hunting and see what happens. Hey, right here out front, four of them. Geese? Nope, ducks. Oh, get in. Early on, the beginning of the year, we were hunting, it was hot, like September, we were hunting 100, 150 bird feeds, and which sounds dumb, but that's that's not many for up here. Uh, we had the, the season split between September and October. We got a lot of birds that pushed down there. I talked to a lot of guys up north of me yet. There was a lot of birds holding up tight up north yet. Uh, finally started to come down, and we're hunting now 800 to 1,500 bird feeds. Uh, a lot of geese around, and they typically won't leave here. There's so much corn comes off at one time. There's so many roosts. They won't leave here until there starts snow on the ground, so they, they'll stick around. Scouting is huge. It's major. I mean, scouting is everything. If you don't scout and do your homework, you're you're not going to kill birds. I mean, you can maybe get lucky. We have, on average, five, six guys scouting all the time. With my job and Jared's job farming there, uh, the big areas that we hunt and uh, scout, you know, we're, we're seeing them every day. So we can scout seven days of the week, and you know, we have good hunts. We see where they're going. We first-hand basis with all the farmers. We know the guys. We talk to them, you know, after the season, before the season. You know, we're in really good, um, really good connections with them guys. Um, and like I say, scouting's everything. We're traveling, you know, each guy, different town, different roost. And it's just, you gotta put the miles in to find the birds you can't just, you can't guess. Now when we're hunting a field with uh, geese and, and ducks, we, we typically um, are gonna to aggressively call it the geese and the ducks will follow in sometimes, but uh, we like to uh, get their attention when they're out there and then uh, slowly just bring them down and, and talk them into the ground. So when they're out there a little ways, we're gonna When they're getting closer, we're gonna into the ground and then call the shot. When you first get started with uh, duck and goose calling, um, just taking as much information as you can. YouTube is a, a great, great tool to start with and you can find whatever style fits your ability. I mean, um, somebody's style might not fit yours as, as it might, my style might, the way I call at them, blow the call, might just be different. So taking as much information as you possibly can and, uh, and try it out. and. Uh, Find a call that fits you. I mean, there's hundreds of calls out there. You know, our calls, I want to say, are, are the best. But, but uh, you know, if there's a call for everybody, and it might not fit you. So, these guys have been hunting waterfowl for quite some time, and over the last couple of years, have started guiding other hunters as a way to extend their own season, and also to help those who may not have a place to go or the time to scout enjoy some quality time in a goose blind. We started Northern Flights canceled four or five years ago. Uh, basically we started doing this. Uh, we had a lot of guys that wanted to hunt, nobody wanted to do any work. Uh, we started things with the Craigslist ad. Uh, from there it really blew up. Uh, we started a Facebook page, Instagram page. We get a lot of people on that uh, social media side of things. Uh, messages all the time wanting to come and hunt. Uh, typically we do all of our hunts in the Thumb of Michigan. Uh, span of uh, five, six towns. The biggest thing for me for guiding is, I guess I like it because at such a young age, I'm 22. Um, I can take guys that can't scout all week, you know, can't, you know, can't hunt, don't have the money to do stuff, they can come up and hunt, you know, their kid, you know, kid shoots his first bird with dad, that type of thing, to really for me, you know, decoying birds, seeing that type of thing happen out here is, just makes me happy versus, you know, shooting and stuff all the time. We're out here today, um, we just got done, awesome hunt. Uh, we just, uh, Josh and I really want to give a thanks to all the landowners that let us hunt and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of guys anymore, there's a lot of competition. Um, it's it's getting to be a big thing and, and that's good. There's a lot of people that are out hunting and stuff, but uh, it's nice when we, we, we can get, uh, we know some landowners and 
uh, can get a lot of a lot of fields to hunt and stuff that have a lot of a lot of birds in them. So we just wanted to say thanks to everybody and um, hope uh, hope you enjoyed the hunt. Well, it was a great day in the field. Special thanks to Jared, Josh, and the rest of the crew for inviting me out on a great duck and goose hunt here in the Thumb of Michigan. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us over the next few weeks. We've got a lot of exciting outdoor adventures headed your way. We'll take you out whitefish spearing on a late season pheasant hunt. We'll also show you some more deer hunting action, bass fishing, all sorts of fun in store yet this month for you here. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com or on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If we don't see you online, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By the locally owned and operated members of the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, who provide oil heat with bioheat, a renewable fuel source designed to benefit the home and the environment. Details on the web at useoilheatmichigan.com. By Jace Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jace has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971. 
with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 10th through the 13th at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars from top pros. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 10th through the 13th. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love.